watch do you get when not one, not two, but three YouTube amateur astrophotographers come together and collaborate on one image. What you get is three astrophotographers simultaneously producing the best image they have to date. Stay tuned, it's a real cracker. My name is Glenn and you're watching Astrobloke. I'm still pressing that button. Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, welcome. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you ever so much for your support. It's really appreciated. So astrophotography can be quite a lonely hobby sometimes. Uh, there's many times I'm doing it alone. But in recent times, I've made some friends and I've collaborated on a few projects. Uh, Joe from joesastrophoto.com, uh, I've done quite a few projects with. Uh, we've worked on the Flaming Star, which I really enjoyed, and recently the Sunflower Galaxy. This time, however, not only am I going to be collaborating with my usual uh, partner in crime, Joe, but Russell Discombe is going to be joining as well. And we're all going to be working on the same image. Russell's also got a YouTube channel and uh, I'll put a link in the description below for you to check that out as he's got some really good content. So we all decided on a target to work on and that was the Crescent Nebula and uh, we've all got mono cameras and I'll go into the details of what we got in a moment um, but we decided to take an HOO image of the Crescent Nebula, put all of our data together and uh, come up with something at the end. We were hoping to get about 30 hours and I actually think we've achieved that so it should hopefully be a really great image. So let's talk about the equipment we're going to be using. Hi Joe and Russell. So the scope I'm going to use for our project is my Altair Astro RC8. I'm going to put the 0.75 reducer on this so it'll bring it down to 1219 millimeters in focal length and it will take it from f8 to f6. My camera will be the 294mm Pro and I'm also going to use uh, two filters, the HA and the O3 by Chroma, which are both 3 nanometer. So I'm hoping to capture some nice data. So let's get this loaded up and let's get this project started. Hi Russell and Glenn, just real quick, what I plan to do tonight is use the Edge HD8 and the 0.7 reducer to make it an effective focal length of 1422 millimeters at f7. I plan on using the 294 mm Pro with an HA Astrodon 5 nanometer filter and a Chroma Oxygen 3 3 nanometer filter. I'll be using the off-axis guider, as you can see, with a ASI 174mm Mini as the guide cam and the ZWO EAF attached to the Edge HD8. Hopefully, I'll be able to get 10 minute long ex sub-exposures and I'm probably going to go for at least uh, 6 hours of, of each HA and oxygen. And while I have you both here, I just wanted to say thanks for the invite, and I hope that uh, my subs make a good contribution to our final image. Good luck, guys. Hi, Joe. Hi, Glenn. I just thought I'd quickly run through the setup that I'm going to be using for our collaboration on the Crescent Nebula. So my main camera is going to be my new mono camera, which is the 2600 mm Pro. So it's the first time I'm using it. So really excited to see what it can do. I'm going to be shooting through the HA and the O3 narrowband filters, and they are the 3.5 nanometer filters from Antilla. 
Um, my telescope tonight is going to be the Skywatcher 190 Maxitoff Newtonian. Now this scope has a focal length of a thousand millimeters at f5.2 so I know it's slightly shorter um, reach than, than your setups but hopefully um, we can combine the data well. It's all sat on top of the NEQ6 Pro. Now I'm going to go for five minute sub exposures tonight. A couple of reasons for that. First is that there's a lot of cloud forecasts. So I'm thinking shorter exposure times, I might be able to get a little bit more usable data and less subs will be ruined by the cloud. There's also quite a lot of wind forecast tonight. And as you can see, it's quite a large setup. And unlike you guys, I don't have the observatory blocking the wind. So when it's windy, I try and keep the exposure times a little bit shorter. Um, so yeah, five minute sub exposures. I'm going to cool the camera to minus 20 I'm going to set the gain to 100 like I said first time using it so hopefully it all goes to plan but I'm really excited to uh, to collect some data on this target and hopefully we can pull together a really great image right well there's a breakdown of all the uh, equipment that's going to be used for this capture all that remains now is for us to all go away and get our data I'm really excited about this project I think we're gonna produce a really good image so I've uh, got high expectations I know Joe and Russell, when I said to them what I was hoping for, thought I was a bit mad and that we wouldn't be able to achieve it, but I, I think we will. I think we're going to come up with a cracking image, so let's go for it. Oh, hi Russell, hi Glenn. Hi mate. Hey, hi Jay. Hi, hey, yeah. you ready to get started? Yeah, on our we're editing? all good. All good. Yeah, awesome. Good. All right, let's jump in. I'm, I'll share my screen and then we'll uh, we'll start editing. Finally, get this data put into a image. <laughs> Excited to see the result. Oh, that's looking really good already. We're done. So there. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you take the take the stars out, edit the nebula, add them back in? Yeah. Yeah. Are we good with that? Yeah. Glenn, yeah. did you want to try something different? Did no, no, take the, the stars out. So it's always best when okay. you're uh, when you're going to start mucking about with the colours, not to have the stars in there, otherwise you end up mucking them up. Yeah. yeah. I, th I think I the, like the the blue in the target as well really makes a difference between a. Uh, a really good image of the crescent and one thing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Having that separation that I called. Yeah. And you both said I wouldn't be. We wouldn't be able to do it. <laughs> no, I said it'd be difficult to do. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, that was before you had these two legendary backseat drivers. In your car. <laughs> this is true. What does this C component? stand for good question no. um it's 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 the cie color palette uh it's a i think i'm i just use them um it's the same with the b component and the yeah. a component uh we could google what it what it means um <laughs> cie i i think um, is that volume seems... one of ten then <laughs> <laughs> yeah 